PC, accounting for your future. So, this is Steve from APC and I'm the course director here at APC and in this video we're going to talk about the SIM F1, the financial reporting and taxation uh, in this particular video. So the first part is where we're going to detail the syllabus, how the SIM F1 may test you in the exam. The syllabus is divided into four sections in there, A, B, C and D. The first of our section talks about the financial reporting. And uh, I mean, talking about the conceptual framework, for example, just the things that you've learned since you've seen the CO2. For example, we need to make sure that the figures within the financial statements are absolutely correct. That's what I mean by faithful representation. Uh, and also we're going to talk about other things. For example, we're going to talk about the relevance. How we're going to talk about how the uh, IFRS or International Financial Reporting Standards will be developed by the IASB, etc. Of course, we're going to look at a little bit about the corporate governance as well, mainly focusing on to the audit committee within a company. Because as we may be aware of, we need to make sure that the financial statements are absolutely correct. Of course, the shareholders employ the finance director to work for him. And the finance director may lie to shareholders. So that of course, shareholders is going to approach to the auditor, asking the auditor to give the audit opinion on the true and fairness of the financial statements that the finance director has prepared originally. Of course, we're going to look at how this process may work and how the audit committee may help within the organisation as well. The section B, accounting for 45% of the syllabus, is mainly talking about how we're going to prepare the financial statements. Because for the financial accounting, we are, uh, we are mainly focusing on the reporting bit. We're going to report our result to the shareholders. And the figures within the financial statements, such as the inventory, which means the things that we're going to sell, of course, those will be regulated by different accounting standards, such as the IS number two inventory. For the property plants and equipment, regulated under the IS number 16, property plants and equipment as well, something we're going to use within the business. Of course, those are the financial reporting, uh, financial accounting as well as the reporting we are going to be focusing on. And after we look at the section B, we're going to move on to the section C. It's talking about a little bit about the financial management within the business, mainly focusing on the working capital, cash and short term finance. But what are they? So, working capital is something that's working in order to turn into cash. For example, we've got the inventory. Inventory is working because we like to sell those inventories and get the cash in. Receivable is one type of the working capital, so receivable is working because we like to collect the money from a customer so that becomes the cash. Payable, payable is working because we like to settle the liabilities to the supplier and spend the cash out. So those are the working capitals. And also how we're going to prepare the cash budget and how we're going to manage the cash and also how we're going to borrow the money from the outside, which is the short term finance we're going to be able to look at, uh, look at later on. Because if your business is running out of cash, of course you cannot operate your business at all. So looking at the SIMA E1 organisational management as an example, if you run out of cash, how are we going to uh, operate within the, business? How, within the business? How are we going to guarantee the quality uh, of the products that you've produced in the business? There's no point doing that. So once we look at the section C, we're going to move on to the section D of the exam. It's where we're going to look at some of the business taxation. So we're not dealing with one particular jurisdiction such as in the UK. We are talking about the international stream of the business taxation. We are only learning some of the theory bit related to the business tax. For example, how we're going to calculate the corporation tax how we're going to calculate the individual income tax, co uh, the capital gains tax, as well as the VAT, which is the sales tax. 
So we're going to talk about those issues with regards to the section D. But just to give you some of the overview of why do we have tax. So the reason why do we have tax is because the government is not for making organisation. Now if that is the case, the, the government is, 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 is not going to make its profit on its own, but rather the, uh, the government is funded by the taxpayer and the government is going to get the money from a taxpayer such as the company uh, in the local area and use this money to fund some of the expenditure. That's what I mean by business tax. And uh, of course we're going to tax some of the people who has made quite a lot of this money and use this money to help the poor guys to make sure the society is fair. So that's why we have tax. Of course, we're going to look at those business taxation in much more detail when we come to the section D of our study. That's the first part of this video, and the second part of this video is we're going to talk about how the SIM F1 exam may test you about. We've got 90 minutes, 60 questions, and the passing marks is 17, rather than just 50 in the past. Because SIM is going to increase its quality for the management accountant so that the passing marks is increased from 50 up to 70. If you get any marks below that 70, of course, you have to receive this exam again. And all of these questions within the F1 exam nowadays will be the objective text questions. No comment, quest no comment questions at all in the exam. Maybe the exam is going to test you about the objective text question, including the multiple choice questions, including the numbers entry, including the yes or no questions, uh, drop box questions, etc. I mean, all the various questions types, you can see that in our dual course. And how APC can help in this particular exam is that we will provide you with the videos, HD quality videos such as this, covering the whole service in depth and you can rely on those on these videos to pass the exams and of course we will include some of the experts videos as well telling you how we're going to prepare for the exams exam techniques how we're going to uh, score the most remarks in the exam as well in order to help you for the exams we will have the corresponding study notes as well so study notes are written by the experts here below APC and covering the syllabus, the latest syllabus. You can rely on those with lots of practices, questions in the study notes as well and you can pass the exam with our help. If you've got any of these inquiries during the exam, uh, sorry, during your study, you can email our tutor as well. So we've got the tutor support providing you with the uh, customised solution. Uh, helping you to pass the exam and if you fail the exam of course don't worry you can enroll the course again free of charge because we've got the pa pass guarantee to our study packages and uh, I mean you can enroll the course again until you pass the exam of course uh, I'm sure that if you follow our videos following our exercises of course you can pass the exam in one go okay so that's the end of the video uh, for the SIMA F1 and looking forward to seeing you in the actual class APC, accounting for your future.